Hello and welcome to this weekly look at the night sky where I go through what you can see and how you can see it. Each week I cover another constellation and tonight we'll have a look at Ursa Major, the Great Bear. If you went and asked people to name a constellation, most people would point to the same figure, though with slightly different names. Some would call it the Big Dipper, others the Plow. Some would say it's a great casserole, or some sort of wagon. You probably know of it as well. This little figure right here. The thing is, all those people would be wrong. That's not a constellation. That is an asterism. An asterism is a figure that is useful, easy to find, but it's not a real constellation. The real constellation in this case is the Great Bear. And it's quite a lot bigger than that little figure there. Let's take a closer look. The handle that you see on the left is actually the bear's tail. And the rectangle is part of the bear's torso. Here's the entire torso. We have a head here the front leg here and the hind legs back here. Note how the paws seem to be on a straight line. I always like this little detail. Those three pairs of stars are also called the three leaps of the gazelle. Now I should note there are other ways of seeing this great bear and there are a lot of opinions about it. But to me, this works the best. As you can tell, this is a really large constellation. In fact, it's the third largest of them all. As such, you might expect there to be a lot of things to see in this constellation. And there are. In fact, many more than we have time for, so this will be a selection. First, let's have a look at the star in the bend of the tail. It's called Mysa, and if you have a really good eyesight, you might be able to make out a small companion right next to it. This one is called Alcor. And these two stars are actually in the same system. That is to say, they orbit each other. It's one of the very few star systems where you can actually make out the individual stars. Except, Mysa, the bright one, is actually itself a quadruple star system, meaning it's actually four stars. And the little Alcor, well, it's a binary system. So those two stars is in fact a sextuple star system. In the Great Bear, we also have a planetary nebula. That is, the leftovers of a star much like our own Sun. It's called the Owl Nebula and can be found right around here. It's quite faint, but with a good pair of binoculars or telescope and some very dark skies, you might be able to see it. There are several galaxies to be found in the Great Bear, but I would like to just show one of them because it's one of my favorites. It's called the Pinwheel Galaxy and can be found right around here. Of course, as a galaxy, it's quite hard to see even if you're looking through a telescope, so you really need a camera to see the glory of this object. Or if you're the Hubble telescope, it looks something like this. The last thing I'd like to show you is not so much an object as it is an image taken by the Hubble telescope in this area. The idea behind this image is, well, what happens if we take our best eyes 
and stare at an empty part of the sky for a long time, what will we see? The answer? Galaxies. Thousands of them, as far as we can see. Now, how big is this area actually in the sky? Well, if you took a pinhead and held it at arm's length, that's the size. And still, there are thousands of galaxies, each with hundreds of billions of stars in a random part of the sky. And it's the same no matter where you look. So that's why this image is so important, because it showed us for the first time just how big the observable universe really is. And that there are probably more stars in the observable universe than there are grains of sand on the Earth. That's it for tonight. I hope you enjoyed this video and if so, please give it a like. If you want to see more, click subscribe and I hope to see you again next week. And until then, clear skies. Mm -hmm.